Okay, Coach, uh, again, thanks for joining us. Um, why don't you give us a little quick uh, update on what led you here to USC and, and what your, your uh, philosophy or uh, coaching the offensive line is, and, and then we'll take some questions. Yeah, so just excited to be here. Um, you know, like I said, I, I've spent a couple, I spent about six years in the conference out here on the West Coast. Um, you know, at the time, our athletic director, Bill Moose, you know, we had a meeting one time uh, there at Washington State and you know, basically he, you know, he, it always resonated in my mind, but he came in and said, you know, the standard of, of this conference of the West Coast, the standard of the Pac-12 conference is always set by USC. And so, you know, growing up uh, as a football fan and a football guy, SC was always there. Um, and it's one of those things that, um, you know, to get an opportunity to coach at a place like this is just some, it's a dream come true. And to get to be a part of the tradition and the legacy and to help create the, the new standards and the new tradition that we want to, to uphold here is, is just, like I said, it's an honor and it's, it's, it's a dream come true and, and definitely excited to, uh, like I said, to come in and, and, you know, get to work, do my part and, and help lead this thing back to, uh, you know, winning national championships and, and producing players at a really high level and, and, and making everybody proud uh, of the product we put on the football field. Good. Do, do you want to talk a little bit about coaching the offensive line, what your philosophy is and vision that way, and maybe any thoughts you have on, uh, I know you just got here, but um, your thoughts on, on your offensive line room? Uh, you know, uh, it's one of those things, and I really believe this, and, and when you really study the, the elite, top-level, high-end programs, you know, everybody this day and age with, with the spread offense and, and, and throwing the ball at a high level, you know, what it really still comes down to is, is who's great up front. And, and you look every year, year in and year out, the top teams in the country are the ones that are great up front on both sides of the ball. And so, um, you know, like I said, it's one of those things. My goal uh, coming here is, is, to, is to build the, the best offensive line in the country. And I think that, you know, USC is a place where you have the tools and the resources and the expectations to do that. Uh, it, it is the expectations to do that. Um, and so it, it's, it's my goal to come in here and, and, and you, we're, we're working diligently every day to make sure that we sign a uh, uh, elite level, high end, top rated recruiting class in the country, but not only do that, but, but to develop them at a high level as well. Um, it still comes back to, I believe that position it, it is and it will always be a developmental position. And so uh, we got to do a great job when we do get the kids here on campus of developing them and push them to be to maximize the potential that they can play at. And, you know, like I said, find ourselves playing for championships. And, and it starts with those guys up front. Um, so far, just being around what little I have uh, of our kids, um, I think it's a really group, a good group of kids that has experience. Um, I think they're it's a really they're just a, it's a good group of kids They're good young men. They're good kids. They work hard in the weight room. Uh, there's there's not a lot of egos or high maintenance guys in there. They're in there to to do the blue collar work, put their heads down, and, and I've been really impressed with that. I've uh, been really impressed with the acceptance and 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 wanting to to be coached and pushed. And so I think we've got a, a a good foundation. I know we got some older kids that have played a lot of games, and I know we got some really good younger kids uh, that have a lot of promise uh, that that will play. You know, and so. Uh, as we move forward and, and building this, it starts with these guys right now to to create some continuity, uh, to to establish you know uh, the foundation of, of what we want. And like I said, it's you know you start throwing the names out there from from Baselli to Matthews to Munoz to I mean there's too many to name you know, and so uh, you know that's that's what we want to create. Uh, there's already uh, you know Coach Helton and them have done a great job. I know. Uh, two years in a row, they're going to have a first round draft pick uh, come out of this school. So, um, you know, we got to continue that tradition and get to the point where we're getting two to three to four to hopefully one day five drafted off the same offensive line. And so uh, when, when you've got kids like that, that are that are men of integrity and, and good young men, you can build your football team around them. And, and you know, it, it makes it makes calling all offensive plays or running offensive plays a heck of a lot easier when, when you got a, a group that can do do those kind of things. <clears throat> Great, thanks, Clay. Let's take some questions here. We'll start with uh, Ryan Young. Hi, Clay. Uh, how important? 
Good. How important is your background in air raid offenses to kind of fitting into what Graham does in this offense? I think it's just, you know, a comfort level and familiarity. Um, you know, it's one of those things that, that I've spent a lot of time. I mean, I, there's probably, you know, we could go back and it's somewhere between six, seven to eight years uh, that we spent together. Uh, so when it comes down to, you know, protection schemes and, and, and things like that, uh, you know, we come from the same background, the same philosophy of how, how to protect the quarterback and, and how to run the offense. And so, I think it'll be good for him. I think we'll be able to make adjustments easier, bounce ideas off easier, and move forward a little bit easier just because, uh, like I said, we come from the same place, same background, uh, and there's a lot of familiarity and trust with each other. Will anything, will anything look different up front, like why there's splits or anything like that? No, I mean, we, we're not, again, that's, I know Graham has stressed this a lot, that we're not, we're not the true blue Mike Leach, uh, Mike Leach air raid. Um, there's principles from the offense, and there's a foundation – that's built from that. But, uh, you know, Graham has a lot of experience doing this on his own. Uh, everybody that, that kind of leaves a tree puts their spin on the offense. So obviously he has a tremendous amount of wealth and knowledge from his time playing the NFL. Uh, and then just, you know, for myself moving on and, and, you know, getting to coach under guys like uh, Cliff Kingsbury and Jake Spab at all since I've left, um, you know, to, to implement some of the things that they're doing uh, in the offense. And so, um, I don't think we'll, you know, we won't be the, the humongous wide, you know, throw at every play splits that, that we were at Washington State. But uh, from, from a schematic standpoint, we'll be pretty similar as far as uh, how we protect the quarterback. Uh, obviously, the run game will look significantly different, I think. So. <clears throat> okay, we'll go to Ryan Karchi of the LA Times. Hey, Clay, thanks for doing this. Uh, when you are looking for offensive linemen, especially in recruiting, what sort of skill set or, or, you know, just uh, general characteristics are you searching for? Well, I mean, you know, it starts with the measurables. Um, you know, I think at a place like this, you have you have the ability at times to be picky, you know, and so you, you want to make sure they have the measurables and meet the measurables that you're looking for. Uh, from there, do they have the actual athletic abilities to, to make the movements that, that you're going to ask them to do? Uh, I think that gets lost a little bit sometimes in recruiting. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes kids can't do things. They might look the part, but they can't do the things you're asking them to do, but people still sign them. Um, so I think that. And then, you know, like I said, what kind of care, what kind of kid are they? Are they willing to, you know, again, I, as I said earlier, I really believe it's, it's a developmental position. Uh, so it's one of those things that, um, you know, you're constantly uh, having to, um, you know, develop those guys. So they have to be willing to work and put the work in every single day and uh, to do those things. Okay, uh, Adam Grossbart from Southern California News Group. Hey, Clay. Um, when it comes to just – fundamentals and philosophy of the offensive line. Is there anything that you find is unique to playing offensive line within the air raid? Um, you know, obviously, you know, what's unique in this day and age in college football is, is the lack of, of true pass protection, drop back pass protection. Um, you know, what you're seeing out there a lot is, is the RPO based play action uh, pass game. Uh, and so, you know, it is unique a little bit is, is, is you got to be able to be athletic and, and it's a very skilled um, position. Guys, can you hold on one say I, I apologize. The head coach is calling me, so I need to. Can I pause this for two seconds? Momentary intermission. 
call that bigger name on the other line. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, I think Sorry you're back, Clay. I, I apologize. The, the boss was calling, so I thought I better take that one. Yeah, uh, every time you do that, yes, we agree. <laughs> so, uh, where were we at now? Uh, we we're just talking about like what might be different about playing offensive line within the air raid compared to other yeah. offenses. So, so I think it's one of those things. There, there's an emphasis on ha having to be able to draw it back pass and protect the quarterback, which I think, you know, it, it's a lost art. I mean, it, it's still it's something that, you know. I think helps us when we, when we do go into the recruiting process, just because, um, you know, there's not a lot of college teams that do it and it's a skill they're paying, you know, Patrick McComb, uh, Patrick Mahomes, $500 million and, and they're going to drop back pass in the NFL. And so you have to be able to do that. And so I think that's a little bit of a lost art is the ability to teach true pass protection these days. Because not, not a lot of people in college football really, really sell out to do it. <clears throat> And uh, you mentioned wanting to reestablish the run game at USC. What is your plan of action for doing that? Well, we'll, we'll meet with Coach Harrell, and uh, you know we'll have you know we'll have a run game that that is that fits and is complementary to what we're doing in the pass game. Uh, you know we were talking about it at length yesterday. <clears throat> Every time that you know we've had a really good offense or a really strong football team, um, the run game has been really good, and you know not necessarily numbers this side, it's more about how efficient we can run the football. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things that Graham and I both agree that, um, you know, to win a championship, to really truly win a championship, you're going to have to be in situations where you have to get a four minute offense and, and grind out a game. And there's going to be some times we have to win games ugly. You're not going to be able to, uh, you know, win 55 to, to, to 45 every game. And so you have to be able to run the football to do that. Uh, so we'll marry that thing up. But again, we're, we're both in agreement that, um, you know, when, when this offense is going, it's because the running back can't be stopped. It's really, really hard to stop this offense uh, if you can't contain the running back position, whether that's running the football or getting the ball to him in space in the pass game. But again, we understand how key that position is. And if we can be great at that position, uh, which starts with the run game, it's going to be really hard to stop the other fact, uh, uh, factors in this offense. I think it also, I think we got to have a good plan too for, you know, uh, something that I, you know, was fortunate to be a part of the last couple of years with, with uh, some of the guys I was around is short yardage run game and, and, and you know, kind of goal line uh, package game, you know, the, the old true blue air raid, you just run, you do what you do and you, and, and you do it well. Um, you know, been fortunate to be around some guys and, and obviously Cliff's, you know, coaching the NFL now, but is to be able to, to, to get in multiple packages and, and create matchups and situations for success. When you get in those short yardage and goal line situations, instead of just trying to, you know, beat your head against a wall. Okay, we'll go to uh, Ryan Abraham of uscfootball.com. Clay, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, with the USC, you know, they finished last in the conference in the, in the run game you were just talking about. Do you, have you seen any tape? Is any low-hanging fruit things you could do schematically to try to uh, to just get a boost in the in the running game going forward? Yeah, I think there's always going to be some things. Uh, I think too, a lot of that, you know, especially when you come to the play callers in this offense, um, you know, most of them are quarterback-driven play callers, and so <clears throat> you got to have success, and you got to have success early, and 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 the more success you have with that. <clears throat> um, you're able to get the, the runs called more. It's also something that the quarterback feels more confident with as far as just handing the thing off, you know? Uh, so, yes, I think there's a few things <clears throat> from a schematic standpoint that we're going to be able to do that's going to be really easy for the quarterback, and it's going to be really easy for us to have success early in the run game. And when you can establish that earlier, it makes it forces the defense to, to adjust to you, and then you kind of have the you know, cards, so to say, in your hand. And so – um, you know, like I said, it also, you know, we're going to have to look at our personnel. Um, <clears throat> you know, everybody, you know, thinks it's easy to just throw a tight end in there and start pounding the football. Well, you got to have a guy that can do that. You know what I mean? And 
So we got to get in spring ball and evaluate one. We, we got to, you know, we got to improve ourselves in the run game from, from a five, you know, the five offensive linemen standpoint, we got to put those guys in good positions and, and schematically to make sure that we're running uphill and not you know, running downhill, not uphill, but two, we got to evaluate, you know, what kind of, um, you know, what kind of tight end we have, what kind of body we have there. Um, <clears throat> and also is it a situation where we have to get some, some uh, two back personnel in there? Do we have, uh, the depth at running back to get a situation where you can get an extra hat in the run game with with a running back as well. So I think there's multiple factors that will go into it. Um, obviously, we've got a little bit of time with spring ball starting a little bit later. So, you know, as we go in this, we'll, we'll find out, you know, over the next, you know, eight, eight, to, um, eight to 12 weeks of what we are. And, you know, I, I definitely think that, you know, there's some things that we can do that that'll help us put, you know, get ourselves in situations where, you know, we, you know, what I would call, you know, when you got some, you know, the numbers would be give me situations to run the football, you know, and, and again, I still think that, <clears throat> you know, my experience with, you know, the air raid type guys is, is the, the more successful you are early, the more apt you're going to get to do it, you know. <clears throat> you mentioned personnel. Um, I know you haven't been around that long. Any, anyone that you've seen on film or anything stand out to you with some of the guys you inherited for the offensive line? You know, again, you know, I haven't had a chance to study it at length. Um, I've got to see them work and run in the weight room. Obviously, we got a good looking group. We got some talent in that room. We got four of the five starters back. We got some good young players that, that are going to come in and really uh, have, you know, be able to uh, create some competition uh, there uh, to help push us and, and move forward. So, again, you know, we'll see as it goes, but, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with where the room is now. You know, I, it's not like we're walking into a situation where we're going, oh, no, I don't know what we're going to do. We, we, should, we should have the talent and the size and ability to be able to make some plays. <clears throat> okay, we'll go to uh, Eric McKinney of WeRSC.com. Uh, Coach, when, when you're doing kind of the, the introductions as you're coming into a new place, what, what, what do you – bringing there kind of your, your top line things that, that you're going to bring to room and, and what you expect kind of from, from your offensive linemen? Well, it's been tough so far with just the, the COVID restrictions of, of getting a group in there and trying to, you know, kind of lay down the, the groundwork, so to say. So it's kind of just been pieced together, but, you know, I'm, I'm really big in, um, in culture continuity. Um, you know, like I said, I, I think those guys, you know, they gotta, they gotta lead from the front. Uh, they're, they're, they're the biggest people on, it's the biggest group on the team from a standpoint, they have more numbers. There's more alignment than any other group on the team, you know, typically, uh, and they're bigger from a, you know, they're just literally bigger than everybody, you know? So, um, they have to be able to lead, but they also have to be a close group and that, the continuity of that group has to be really strong and really tight. Um, you know, every, every line that you study and you watch, you know, there's, you know, the, the, Example I always bring up is, is the Great Wall of Dallas. Uh, those guys, uh, you know, in the early '90s when they were when they were you know running the show, you know, none of those guys were you know one Hall of Famer. Most of them were undrafted. They're all castoffs, but they had an unbelievable culture, an unbelievable continuity amongst each other, and together they played at a really high level. Um, and so, but it's also we got We got to establish you know a toughness about us. We got to go out there. Um, and, and be accountable to, to all of our principles that, that you know, um, that, that, you know, is going to go into our, you know, kind of culture type stuff. And, and there's a tradition here. You know, it's one of those things that, like I said, it's not, you know, there, there's guys that played here before. And, and when they turn on a game to watch their alma mater, they expect that group to play a certain way. And, and, and that's what we got to get. And, and, and we're going to strive to get that. Because like I said, when those – when, when Pat Harlow turns on the tape and, you know, those kind of guys turn on the tape, you know, they, they want, I, I want them to be proud of how that old line's playing and, and, and turn on go like, that's, that's what we need right there. That's what it used to be, you know. We were only have time for one or two more questions because uh, Coach Davies uh, online also. So we'll finish here with uh, a question from Shotgun Spratlin from uh, uh, USC football. <clears throat> Hey, Clay, will you push to have an under center package for the goal line stuff that you were talking about? Or do you believe the air raid should be, you know, in shotgun pretty much all the time? No, I, I think there's there's a there's a time and place for some under center stuff. Um, do I think it's always the answer to run the ball better? No, I don't. But I do think that, yeah, in, in certain situations, depending on 
what you're trying to do and what you're getting accomplished. I do think there's some things that that definitely helps, you know, in the run game. And so, again, that'll be something that as we continue to get more and more into uh, developing our installs and getting ready for spring ball that, you know, you know, conversations with with Coach Harrell and and, and the offensive staff about, you know, hey, hey, you know, some of the short yardage uh, things that we want to do and, 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 you know, not necessarily even short yardage, but just to be able to go in and, and drive starters as far as uh, being able to chunk away and, and get it into second, third manageable downs, you know, so I do think there's a time and place for it and, and it'll be something that there'll be some conversations about, but again, ultimately at the end of the day, you know, we're going to sit in there as an offensive staff and do what we think is best to help, help us win football games. We'll take one final question for Clay from uh, Mark Culkin from uscscoop.com. Uh, thanks, Coach, for doing this. Welcome. Um, you, you were talking about, you know, some of the things you're going to bring from, from your past stops. Can you talk about your coaching style and discipline and how you communicate to getting your point across? You know, what type of coach are you from that aspect? Well, I mean, it's it's one of those things. I still think it comes down to relationships. You know, I got to get in here and 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 we got to we got to develop a relationship and, and a level of trust. And obviously, these kids, you know, they signed with, at USC for a, for a different O line coach. You know what I mean? And so it's imperative, you know, in the early stages right now is to get in and, and develop a relationship with these kids, establish a level of trust, and the faster we can do that, the faster we can really, you know, there's there's you know that and as anybody knows, there's, there's always tough conversations, you know, you got 16, 17 guys in there and every one of them wants to be an all American, you know, um, which is a good thing, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you can only play five of them. So you got to be able to get in there. You got to be able to, to have the trust factor and, uh, with each other to be able to push buttons, push kids out of their comfort zone, uh, get them to try to, you know, maximize the peak level of, of, of physical condition that they're in right now and push them forward and moving forward on that. So, you know, right now, the, the biggest thing, you know, like I said, it's, uh, you know, I got to get in there and, and, and develop the trust and, and the continuity of that deal and, and create a culture that when we step on that field every day, you know, I want to be the hardest working group. I don't care what it's practice, whatever we're doing, you know, I want the strength coach or whoever's out there to go back and say, look, you know, regardless of the results, you know, the hardest working group on the, on the field is the offensive line. And, and that's just something that has to, it has to be that way. And, and they have to be the toughest group out there. And we have to establish that identity and that culture. And obviously it's a work in progress right now, but you know, like I said, that's, that's what we're working on to, to do as quickly as possible. Okay, Coach McGuire, thanks very much for taking the time with all of us today. Uh, we look forward to, to getting to see you in person soon and uh, we wish you the best of luck and uh, we'll let you go now and get on with your day and we'll we'll move over to, to Coach Davey. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Okay, Coach Davey, I, I think you're with us. Um, just wanted to uh, say uh, welcome, congratulations on your promotion and we'll ask you to make a couple of opening comments. Um, maybe you could talk about uh, the promotion to becoming a full-time coach and as a tight end coach, and maybe uh, a little bit about uh, the personnel that you have and you're going to be working with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Tim. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm fired up about the, the promotion. Um, you know, this, uh, this opportunity is, is, is a, an elite opportunity for me. Um, obviously, uh, John David Baker set the, set the bar high and I, I plan to keep it there and, and, and raise it even higher, but um, I'm fired up uh, about, you know, just being part of the group that we're kind of building here. You know, obviously I have a great relationship with Graham, but you guys just got off the phone with, uh, with Clay and Clay and I go way back. So he actually recruited me to Texas Tech. So, and we went to the same high school at one point. So, you know, he's kind of a, he's kind of a legend in my eyes and I know what type of coach he is. So we're building a staff here that I think is going in the right direction. I'm, I'm really excited to be part of it. And then, you know, we have the best thing about the job is you're, you're walking into a great, uh, great, uh, great room of, of, of guys um, with Eric Crumho being, you know, the veteran leader, Josh Follow being, you know, the, the freak athlete and Jude being the up and comer. And then you just signed, you know, really two, two really good, uh, players and Michael Trigg and Lake McCree and, and those guys can play. So I'm excited about being their coach. I'm excited about, you know, elevating them to uh, new heights and, and seeing where this thing goes. 
Great. Okay, we'll take questions from uh, from the group uh, media that we have here, Seth. Um, so I see uh, some of you still have your hand up. Uh, Ryan Young, did you still have a question? Yeah. Uh, okay. Since you brought it up, Seth, can you kind of expound on your history with Clay McGuire and what stood out to you about him as a coach when you were together before? Yeah, so Clay, uh, Clay graduated from Crane High School, which is south of Midland, Odessa area, which is in West Texas. Um, and during you know, his time there, he was kind of the big name around that area. He played quarterback, you know, they were winning a lot of games. And, uh, and so my dad is a high school coach in, in the area as well. And so we kind of knew about him. And then when I was, uh, the end of my seventh grade year, we actually, my dad took the, the crane job. And so we moved out there and, and, you know, Clay was still a legend out there. So obviously, you know, he kind of took a liking to me when he'd come back home and visit people and we'd go train together and he'd, you know, get out there and we'd throw the football around. But, uh, and then once I got to a point where I was able to be recruited by Texas Tech, he was already, you know, finished with his eligibility. He ended up being on staff there. And, you know, obviously he was always pulling for me. Um, so it was just a unique opportunity for us to kind of continue our careers throughout our football career. And then, you know, obviously this job opens and he ends up being a name that's brought up and and uh, obviously does a great job through the uh, interviewing process and it just ends up being a great fit for us. And it's just, it's kind of ironic how it just, it just, it just stays that way. We just kind of keep following each other. And, uh, and like I said, we, I know Clay, you know, probably better than anybody on the staff. And so I kind of know what we're getting as a football coach and we're getting elite, an elite clo uh, coach and even better person. So, you know, I would just, you know, I'm really excited about the, you know, the jumps that the offensive line is going to make and, and what he's going to do for this program. And then with the tight ends, I know when you recruit tight ends, you guys kind of sell uh, prospects on playing the Drake London role. Can you kind of tell us how you see that position evolving in this offense moving forward with the guys you're bringing in? Yeah, so, you know, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember this name, but there is a name that, uh, that I always refer back to. His name is Jason Morrow, and he was – he was my tight end when I was playing at Texas Tech. And the year after I left, he ended up playing, uh, you know, he's playing Jake Drake's role, which is why we also listed him as a tight end because he played some of the inline tight end stuff as well as the H-back stuff. But that year after I left, he caught 106 balls for over 1,300 yards. And uh, and so that's kind of the envision With Jace be, doing it, being able to do that is because he could do both, right? He ended up being a second-round draft pick for the Jets or whatever. But – he had the ability to do both, and that's what we're kind of looking for. You know, Drake, um, Drake right now, you know, he's just been – he's been split out the whole time. We haven't really used him as much in the run game. Now, I think moving forward, we can get creative and, and do some of that stuff with him. But from a recruiting standpoint, an evaluation standpoint, I'm looking for guys like Jason Morrow that um, that can, you know, weigh, you know, 6'5", 6'6", 225, 230 pounds. And Jason was actually like 245, but – that could run um, and separate in the pass game, but as well as is 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 you know put their face on somebody when they need to, you know, and, and help us in the run game as well. You know, when you have that guy, you can just get creative and some of the stuff you do, especially when you don't have a uh, you don't have a mobile quarterback. You know, kind of like Slovis. You know, nothing against Slovis, but he can't run to save his life, and nor do we want to run him because you don't want to get that dude hurt because he's such a special player, especially you know, and it keeps you keeps you moving. But if you can find a tight end that can do both then you, in this offense, you just made it really, really hard to defend. Okay, uh, Ryan Karchi. Hey, Tim, I don't know if it's me or if somebody else is, but I can't. I'm up front here. Uh, does that work there, anybody? Ryan Karchi? Ryan Karchi. Uh, maybe it's me. So I'm going to take over because I think Tim's computer died. 
Um, okay, Eric McKinney, I see your hand up. Uh, Coach, we hear about kind of the, the team goals, the offensive goals, the position goals, and, and then the individual player goals. For, for the position goals, what's a successful season for, for the tight ends in 2021? Well, from a, you know, team-wise, we just want to do our job, whatever our job is, and make sure we're winning games and, and winning championships. But from like a statistical value, I guess, you know, it's hard to say uh, just because you don't know, you know, like, you don't know what, how many we're going to be targeted, how many opportunities we're going to have, but you got to factor in Drake London's role a little bit too. You know what I mean? And, and so I would say, you know, somewhere above 50 receptions in that room, you know, and then obviously the production, you know, yards after the catch, I don't know, you know, somewhere between north of 800. Uh, that would be, that would be very productive for us. Um, and then, you know, I know that's setting the bar high, but that, that's what we, that's, you know, I, I've always been able, and, and Graham talks about this all the time, is that we, we set the expectations high and we're not going to, you know, come down for anybody. And that's how you get good. So, um, you know, with Drake being at the wide spot, it's going to take some some production out of, quote unquote, the tight end room. But, you know, it's once we get to a point where we have a guy that can do both and, and maybe some guy, you know, evolves this year that he can do that. Uh, you're looking at what I just told you, you know, something like around those numbers. And then, like I said, it's kind of hard to pinpoint like statistic goals for this year because, you you know, we need to go through the spring and figure out what we have and who who can do that for us. So, you know, I imagine Drake's going to be a guy that's going to go over 100, you know, receptions and, 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 and 1,200, 1,300 yards if he's doing, if he's doing it the right way. So um, there's a there's a lot of creativity, things that we can do to get those guys the ball. But um, we'll find out once we get through the spring on who, who kind of steps up and fills that role. Uh, Ryan Karchi. Hey, Seth, thanks for doing this. Uh, being that you have all the experience that you do in the air raid and that you've, you know, been around USC a little while at this point, where do you feel like that offense still has the ability to evolve or, and maybe how can the tight ends and Drake kind of fit into that? that more evolved sense of the air raid? Well, the good thing about what Graham's doing here is we can get into 11 and 12 personnel sets and still run, you know, our base pass game and our base run game and, and rules don't change. And um, people are out, guys are allowed to continue to play fast and, and, and not think as much. So, you know, as soon as we, uh, we feel good about our personnel, we can get into some big sets. And, and do some creative things, especially in the run game or the RPO game. And that's something we're going to dive into this offseason as well, especially with, you know, obviously, like we've been talking about Drake London. Uh, he's a very, very special talent. And then you got some guys like EK and Jude that are very physical uh, and follow. He's very athletic um, that you can do some things with those guys. You know, those guys, to me, you know, the biggest thing this offseason, those guys have got to become more consistent, more consistent players that, that we can rely on them to do different things because, if we are going to go that route, well, they're going to have to show up more times than not and be effective for us. So, you know, I think that's my uh, my challenge this spring is to make those guys more consistent so we can get into those bigger sets and do some more creative stuff out of the room game. Awesome. Uh, Ryan Abraham. Hey, uh, Seth, thanks for doing this. Um, what to ask you what your role was on the recruiting side of things and then how you see that going to change now that you're a uh, full-time assistant. Um, obviously, with being in the quarterback room, you know, I really, me, Graham and I really, you know, did a great job working together on the quarterbacks. I don't see that changing. Um, I think we got a great relationship there and we're able to to present, you know, what we can offer a kid um, strictly because we both played it. We're both in the same room. We, we both, we love this offense. Like we talk about it all the time. I don't know if there's anywhere else I'd rather coach, but in, in this system and, and try to, to, to evolve it and make it the best system possible. But coaching in this system is what I love to do. And so it's a easy, it's easy to present to those quarterbacks. And then obviously when you take on a new role and you're a position coach, you gotta, you gotta own that role as well. So obviously you gotta own the, own, own the tight end room and, and recruiting responsibilities in that room as, as well. So, you know, and then we talk, we always talk about team recruiting. So whether, you know, sometimes you guys don't, 
maybe not know on who, who's who's team recruiting who what guy you're always going to be in the background loving up some guy that we we feel like as a staff is uh, makes us better and makes us a national uh, title contender so I'll always be in the background helping whoever needs help shotgun so talk about the the catches and everything and everybody kind of want to talk about that with, with the tight ends at USC but how do you improve the blocking that's been the area that's been probably the most inconsistent I believe yeah and I think uh, I think there's a couple answers to that question or solutions um, you know one part of the part of the issue last year and this is not an excuse this is just kind of an, something that we got to address but with covid, you were so you were so nervous about losing players that you didn't bang as much in practice, right? Because if you lost a guy from COVID and then you lost a guy from dropping a shoulder in practice, well then you may not be under the limit to play. So you kind of backed off banging a little bit. And so I think we got to get back into being a little more physical in practice. Um, and then along the same lines, you know, with us using a tight end more and more, you know, we got to adjust the way we practice just um, from a uh, from a scheduling standpoint and what drills we're doing, and make a you know more emphasis on teaching those guys to techniques and uh, and practicing those techniques on a daily basis to where you know when they get in the game they're very confident, comfortable doing that. Do you see the blocking or the receiving portion of of the tight end position more important in this offense? I think they're both. I mean, it's hard to say, you know, it just depends on how we're going to attack that week. Right. I mean, every week's a little bit different. And uh, I think, like I said, just before, you know, we started talking about this, I think you got to be consistent at doing both. And when you're asked to, when it's a game plan that we're going to go out and attack them through the air, we got to be great at separating and getting to our depth and catching the football. Um, if it's a, if it's a game that we're asked to, to, to get in there and, and, and put our face on somebody, then we have to have great technique with, you know, our base and our hands and, and, and our hat placement and and having something about you that you're going to just, you know, you're going to dominate the guy in front of you. So as, as well as teaching, you know, getting better at practicing techniques, run game techniques and blocking, you know, there's got to be a mentality change in this room that, you know, I know we're called the air raid, but and we talk about the Boulevard Studios around here all the time, but there's a, there's a dark alley to that Boulevard too, and we got to go fight. Okay, I think uh, that's it for the questions, Seth. I appreciate you taking the time um, today. Amelia, thanks for being here. Katie, thanks for jumping in when I froze. And um, we hope to see everybody soon. Uh, um, we'll keep you posted on what our, our spring schedule is like once uh, we get some clarity on that. So with that, we'll uh, wish everybody a good rest of the day and we'll sign off. Thank you, guys.